So the next uh, part of our program is uh, Startup Lightning Talks, and we have asked the startups to be very succinct and to tell us uh, in particular about one breakthrough idea that they have, one breakthrough insight uh, that's going to move this area forward. So without further ado, Jeff Barr from Link Tribe. Good morning. My name is Jeff Baer, 2006 alum, founder at Link Drive. Uh, we're building a modern version of the Internet of Trucks, which is actually about 30 years old, going back to Qualcomm and Walmart back in the early 90s. So we care about intelligent mobility because we have a fundamental belief that the human beings that leverage the technology to do more work better uh, want to play a key role in this. And uh, with trucking specifically, uh, 30% of the fuel economy comes from nothing but the driver's right foot, regardless of the make of the truck. Um, Daimler, Cummins, the ATA all agree on that. So we've built Pedal Coach to be, um, it's, it's been compared to a Fitbit for fuel economy and safety with trucking, running on a mo modern mobile resource management platform that is uh, allowing us to create fleet management version two, uh, which is not just built by the enterprise, for the enterprise, user be damned, but is built with the user as a key operator in that whole ecosystem to allow us to do more work with less. Thanks. Next up is Nasser Mohammed from Foxtrot. Hello, my name is Nasser Mohammed and we're Foxtrot Systems. The Foxtrot platform is a digital layer that brings delivery fleets to the cloud, enabling real-time machine-assisted uh, the decision making. So the, uh, the Foxtrot platform considers many factors that come in the daily life of a delivery driver. Things like uh, customer readiness, uh, their own tendencies, as well as traffic uh, at large. These factors tend to, t to make drivers be on the road over two times longer than they should be. Our algorithm makes sure that these factors are taken into account and allow the most efficient route possible to be at their hands. So also, our ma machine learning permits us to s become smarter and learn from their own routes to be able to give them the best routes. We, our studies find that the that routes become obsolete in as little as 15 minutes. And if with our learning, we can help them uh, always be having eyes on the ground considering all the factors and know exactly what the best solution is, thus uh, reducing carbon emissions and costs and being able to meet demand whenever and wherever it uh, occurs. Thank you. All right, next speaker is Josh Kanner from Smart Video. Thank you, Trond. I was told I have to keep it to a minute, so we'll keep the watch up here. SmartVid.io is a platform for managing, collaborating, and using machine learning to analyze the copious amounts of video and photo data that are now coming from our increasingly intelligent both mobility as well as field user ecosystem in industry. We're an enterprise platform. We're really geared towards business users, whether they may be in construction, capital projects, inspections, insurance, manufacturing, and more. What we're seeing from our experience in those industries, and we're a little bit different than a traditional MIT startup, as we've all got over 15 years experience building enterprise software in many of these industries, is that there's huge amounts of data coming from the edge, and there's great brand new and very powerful techniques, many of them developed within the autonomous or at least being leveraged in the autonomous vehicle community for classifying and analyzing that data. We put a simple term on it, we call it smart tagging. We use voice, we use vision, we use anything that can come natively in the payload from these remote devices. Again, whether it's a mobile phone, a drone, Maybe it's uh, something coming off of a wearable device. And we allow you as an enterprise to be able to tag it, find it, organize it, and use it for your workflow. And later, in case anything, any problems arise, uh, you can find the relevant information you need for insurance claims and other related information. Again, we're smartvid.io. We're based here locally. Our product is in beta now with over 20 enterprises and live on over 60 projects. And we're soliciting, through the ILP program, which has been wonderful, additional enterprise beta users for our new platform. Thank you. Tom Kowalczyk here from uh, uh, KMRM. Good morning. I want to bring a uh, working knowledge of the ever-expanding uh, set of brilliant technologies to the workforce after next. More specifically, accelerate the transition of exciting uh, educational materials into the uh, high school, community college, and uh, freshman, sophomore college uh, session. Uh, two weeks ago, I attended a, uh, 
a hackathon, a medical hackathon here at MIT, 400 people from around the world advancing medical technology in a variety of, uh, of aspects. So what I want to do is, is work on getting that kind of excitement into more generally the Internet of Things, and in particular looking for use cases from, uh, from this conference that we would put into that. Next up is Kevin Leary from Power Hydrant. Hi, I'm uh, Kevin Leary from uh, Power Hydrant. We're based uh, in the Innovation District at the uh, far end of Summer Street. Uh, autonomous and semi-autonomous electric vehicles are going to need to be charged autonomously. Uh, Power Hydrant enables that uh, charging through a conductive robotic system. We've innovated specifically in the area of very low-cost 3D sensing and very low-cost robotics. So we have a build cost of about $400 for conductively charging electric vehicles. These vehicles would include, of course, passenger cars, but also urban uh, applied buses and uh, ground-based vehicle drones. Uh, we're at 11 Elkin Street in Boston, and uh, come by and see us anytime. Thank you. Next is uh, Alex Skolnick from Liquid Piston. And he has a liquid piston. Good morning. Alex Skolnick from Liquid Piston. Pleasure to be here. Uh, so most of you believe that autonomous cars are coming, but consider what happens when you take the, the heavy-footed driver out of the loop, or when we apply B2V technology and vehicles can now coordinate their behavior. Vehicles are going to become smaller, lighter, and require smaller uh, power systems. Now also consider that today's engines are only about 20% fuel efficient, and when you reduce the size of an engine, that number drops uh, dramatically. So we are solving this problem. What I'm holding in my hand is a, uh, a concept 30 kilowatt diesel engine. It's a new type of rotary engine based on a new thermodynamic cycle. We can basically double the fuel economy of a gasoline engine in a size and weight that's 10 times smaller than a typical diesel. Applied uh, as a range extender for autonomous electric vehicles, you can envision a car that has a smaller, uh, lighter battery system, um, cheaper battery system, and you still provide the user with the capability to rapidly refuel, give them the range that they are accustomed to, but most importantly, with the efficiencies that we're able to achieve, we can actually reduce the CO2 footprint versus charging your electric car with the US power grid. So uh, software is driving a revolution in the, uh, in the autonomous uh, car space. We think that hardware has to keep up with that revolution, and we hope to be at the forefront of that. Thank you. Next up is Mike Stanley from TransitX. Hi. TransitX is developing a low-cost mass transit system to replace cars, buses, trains, and trucks, and airplanes worldwide. We're going to put this in 100 cities in 10 years with ultra-lightweight personal rapid transit vehicles. It's a big change. It violates probably at least half the things that Professor Green was telling you about the mobility lab because this can be done. We have letters of intent from the city of Chelsea, city of Everett, and uh, University of Utah. Uh, we're going to be rolling this out. It should be in deployed in two or three years, and there will be a massive switchover because there's no switching cost to go to a uh, privately funded and financed mass transit system with the convenience that are two to 10 times faster than all the existing mass transit systems. So that's TransitX. Thank you very much. Last up is Christian Umbach from Zapix. Did I say that correctly? No. Yes, you did. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Christian. I'm one of the co-founders of uh, Zapix.io. That is X-A-P-I-X. And the X really stands for, uh, for our mission in that sense. We're trying to empower uh, transit and mobility systems through uh, the software tool that we've developed. Um, the software tool enables you to plug in multiple um, data sources, whether that's from car companies, from cities, from the various IoT sensors that you have uh, across the city, um, to uh, hospitality uh, data. And what we're um, allowing enterprises is to really get their data out and empower uh, the visions of the, the platforms that are increasingly uh, talked about. And for developers at the same time, we allow them to uh, develop their APIs or their services um, at least at a 50% uh, time increase um, to uh, what they have today. So we empower the exchange. We make uh, multiple data sources 
integrated. Um, we can make combina combinations through that inner um, that data sources easier, and um, developers love it. And uh, we've so far uh, deployed with uh, airline clients in, in Europe, and we're now taking this to automotive and uh, cities to empower their platforms. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Dequan Wu. I'm from Huawei Technologies. Uh, I'm here, uh, I'm responsible uh, here in, in East Coast, uh, in Boston. Uh, I'm responsible for, th for the technology cooperation, uh, which means uh, working with uh, uh, MIT and also uh, investing in startup companies. Yeah, we very much appreciate the startup exchange platform, and it's, it's very good. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jake Harrison. I'm from uh, Samsung Strategy and Innovation Center. We are an innovation team primarily located in California, and we have a couple East Coast members actually just across the street here. So I'd echo a lot of what Mr. Paselli said about uh, we're relatively comfortable in some parts of the business, but then we're definitely looking for uh, opportunities to work with new companies to help us innovate in new areas, especially on the software side. I mostly work with the components businesses, primarily B2B businesses, um, but I'd be uh, more than happy to talk to, if you're from the mobile side or software side, uh, I can certainly help you identify the right people in Samsung. We have a lot of different people working on different areas and uh, sometimes navigating is a complicated process, but happy to talk to anybody. And then Forum 8, it's a new ILP member, I'll come. Oh, hello there. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, so my, my name's Brendan Hafferty. I'm the general manager of Forum 8, based in London. Uh, we're a Japanese software house specializing in uh, real-time 3D in, um, interactive VR simulation software, specifically um, in the area of linking to, to, to uh, our meeting today. Uh, one of our clients, Toyota, are using our software for their autonomous vehicle research in Tokyo. Uh, most of the Japanese car companies use our software in a variety of different ways that we, that, we, that we never hear about because they don't tell us. However, um, well, we're very pleased to join ILP. We joined in January, I think it was, and um, I'm looking forward to a, a great relationship over the next years. Thank you. Last out, I wanted to uh, uh, welcome Stephen. Do you want to, it's from uh, EBO representing Foxconn, correct? Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Londrigan. I'm with uh, EBO Foxconn. We're one of several venture groups uh, that operates through Foxconn. We're covering the East Coast here. Uh, so we would certainly welcome an opportunity to uh, speak with anyone who is interested in uh, working with Foxconn, as well as discussing any kind of financing arrangements, because we also do venture work. Right. Thank you very much.